Hey everyone and thank you for checking my video. My name is Marcin and I have to say I didn't plan this video but something happened yesterday uh, which is 16th of June. Adobe introduced some updates, updates to Lightroom, Photoshop, Camera Raw, um, Bridge and maybe some other softwares. And as everyone talk about Photoshop and Lightroom, I'm mainly excited about Camera Raw because it looks completely different. So when we check the layout of Lightroom, it remains the same, Photoshop similar, some new options, but when it comes to camera, it looks completely different. And this is really exciting because I think now uh, Lightroom will have some competition. Of course, when it comes to Lightroom, we have the options that Camera Raw is lacking. But when it comes to adjustments, uh, I'm afraid that Camera Raw uh, could be a little bit better. The layout for adjustments here uh, seems to be really amazing now. So we are going to start from the very beginning. I'm going to explain to you and uh, this panel and what changed over here. Uh, first change, I can see the layout. As you can see, we have images on the very bottom. And now when we, we don't open them, we don't have them uh, on the side here. Of course, some buttons like saving image and uh, opening images in Photoshop, that change as well. But we'll talk about this at the very end. I want to start uh, with the profile. So before we had the profile in the basic panel together, we had we had it just uh, above white balance. Uh, so as you can see now, uh, profiles got excluded from this as a completely uh, separate option uh, that we have now. Also, uh, once we open the basics, uh, there is some change. So of course we have white balance as it is. We have the sliders as they is. Uh, we have the texture clarity dehaze and everything remains the same here. But before in this basic panel, we had the auto button here. And now this auto button got also excluded and placed on the very top. So the small uh, corrections in how it look, but as you can see, um, it's got probably more intuitive right now and it will be better for new users of camera. Of course, as you can see, all of the panels are from the top to bottom and we don't have uh, these panels as the icons on the very top, which I think is amazing change because now when we want to work with the tone curve, we don't have to search for the icon and see the name, but we just hit on the curve and we open it. So once we are in the curve, I believe amazing change happened here um, because they made it more intuitive. So we don't have to switch between channels, but we see the channels as the colors. So that's really simple. And first we have two options of the curve. Uh, as you can see, we have parametric curve and uh, we have the point curve and we can easily switch uh, between these two. When we want to work with some channels, uh, we can just hit the colors. And another help for everyone who start, who doesn't feel really comfortable with this uh, just yet, we have help in colors. So when we go to red channel, we know when we will be dragging the curve up we will have the red color here. When we'll drag in the curve down, the image will be becoming colder. So we'll be increasing the secondary color or rather decreasing the red pixels on the image. After that, uh, we have details. So the order of this panel state uh, the same, but what they did here, they decided to make this a little bit more uh, tidy. So before, when we opened the detail panel, uh, we had the sharpening and below we had more options, but now they hidden some of the other options and you can expand these sliders. So when you want to adjust sharpening in details, you can move the slider here, but then, if you want to have more options like radius, detail, and masking, you will have to expand this. Also, when it comes to noise reduction, um, they separate noise reduction and color reduction. And for each of these also, if you want more option, like preserving the details, we will have to expand this. 
Then we have a color mixer, which will be our hue saturation luminance, and also I see big improvements here. So first of all, uh, we can work in the same mode as before. So we can switch between hue, saturation and luminance, but now we can also switch to color and work uh, separately on the color. Uh, really intuitive, uh, very similar to how Lightroom is solving this issue. A split tuning, not a big change, but I can't imagine the change could be applied uh, to the split tuning. Uh, after that, we have optics and another change here uh, because uh, before when we were working with optics, whether profile or manual, uh, we had all of the options opened. But now, as you can see, uh, the most important options will be distortions and vignetting. But when it comes to the fringe, so something that doesn't really happen often, something that is not a major problem, uh, but it's something that mainly stays in the past, we have to expand it. So nice change and they keep it nice and tidy. Even when we go with a uh, profile correction, as you can see, we can uh, do the profile correction. And when we want to do a little bit more of this profile correction, we'll have to expand this and manipulate more with distortion and vignette if we want this. So the idea probably behind uh, these new improvements is make it as easy as possible for uh, new users and also keep it tidy. Uh, one change, and I think amazing change, is the panel geometry. Uh, before we didn't have this panel in camera, it is transform panel in Lightroom, and um, it was before in camera as well, but it existed as a tool that I never understood this. And also, uh, first of all, they want to let us know we can do auto adjustments, and when we want to go into manual transformations, we have to expand. So another change, tight change of the name uh, when it comes to geometry, it's not transform. Um, I don't know why they didn't make the same as Lightroom, but that's absolutely fine with me. Uh, effects, which is grind and vignetting. And once again, keeping it tidy, we want to do more, we expand. And calibration also as the last, pa last panel, uh, so the same as in the case of Lightroom. And I like the new setup. I like how it looks because it's more in intuitive. And up front, we have things that we actually need. Uh, also, the tools, they used to be on the very top, but right now, as you can see, we have the tools on the side and they seem to be placed in a much nicer way. So what we need is first on the top and it wasn't the case um, before. So uh, first we have the edit that we work now. The second tool is crop or rotate. Then we have spot removal, which I don't think uh, is the best option to do, whether it's Lightroom or camera, because when we clean, uh, we want to do it in uh, Photoshop. And the other tools that are just adjustment brush, some uh, filters, uh, snapshots uh, that moved here. So that's the difference. They moved the snapshots. I never understood why the snapshots and presets are with the main panel. So these are uh, great changes and I find they try to make it similar to Lightroom, but somehow it happened. Um, it seems they make it maybe even a little bit better than Lightroom. I know not everyone can agree um, because we all got used to Lightroom, but uh, I really like this new setup that we have here. And the other thing that I still need to get used to, so I want to talk about this, the way we save images now in uh, camera or the way we open images. So uh, the same way, if we want to open as the object, we can press the shift and now we have open or open object, or we can just hit here. So even if we forget about this, we can check and open this uh, as an object, a uh, huge help for everyone who start. When we save images, uh, we can just hit the button on the very top. Before we had this option here on the bottom, and we can easily find the saving option over here. So whether we want to save one image or more images, we can hit the top, uh, choose the options for saving images, uh, very similar as, uh, as the Lightroom has it. 
uh, a little bit more comfort when it comes to saving, but not as many options as Lightroom probably has. But we can also save it other ways. So for example, we can choose the options here. Uh, we can synchronize a setting, which I find more intuitive. Uh, we can also hit this button a little bit below and we will have, once again, the saving option. So as you can see, um, really uh, intuitive and even in the options from what I can see, we can choose the save image. So um, many shortcuts, uh, many options, much more intuitive, whatever we check, wherever we click, we can easily um, find ourselves comfortable. So this is pretty much the first time I open this. I know it's quite chaotic, but as you can see, I got around quite well so i didn't get lost uh, i think amazing change so if you did not update i recommend you to update because uh for sure uh camera 12.3 uh looks so much better and uh, this is one update that i really found exciting it's probably the best update that happened in the last few years so thank you for watching uh, soon we come in with regular videos. I never really post much about the updates that come in Photoshop. I prefer to be focused on things that um, really matter when it comes to the work, but this update was important. I wanted to talk a little bit about it. Just say I like it. So thank you for watching and see you next time.